discussing, well, then, you know, maybe maybe the favor is actually in the devotee's court. Nietzsche's not saying this is me, right? If, if, if there is that state of affairs, if that state of affairs does in fact exist, well, maybe, you know, infinity wins, right? So your personal immortality and, and bliss and happiness, maybe you do win in the long run. But in this world, you know, the egoists won it, right? The egoists won it. Uh, and that's, 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 that's the problem, right? So perhaps, problem insofar as Nietzsche is critiquing sort of this state of weakness, perhaps the greatest, perhaps there has never been a more dangerous ideology than this will to good. So let's look at this idea of the will to good. The will to good. So first, the will to good assumes a diametrically opposed worldview wherein good is in direct opposition to evil. Right? If you assume uh, a will to good rather than a will to power worldview. Your worldview for a will to good assumes that good and evil are in a direct polemic opposition. So you assume you assume a um, you assume a polemical worldview uh, for good in opposition to evil. Obviously, um, an individual who assumes a worldview that is motivated by a will to power, an egoism, is motivated to recognize that this is, this is false, right? There's a conflation here, right? What we do is, we being egoist in sort of the new chain sense, which I haven't quite gotten to yet, we recognize, that, and I'll talk about this actually in a second, we recognize that it's not about good and evil as polemically sort of at two ends of some spectrum. One is all good, one is all evil. You are either one or the other. It's mutually exclusive, blah, blah, blah. Not at all. Right? What we recognize is that in order to exist in this world, in order to flourish in this world, you have to embrace both tenets of good and evil. I am as good as I am evil. Right? I am as good as I am evil. I am very, very, very capable of some evil shit, as are you, right? And instead of saying that I need to divorce myself from the evil that inheres within me, and even a believer would have to believe this because the believer believes, at least in the Christian tradition, believes in the fall, so that there is uh, remnants of evil and um, pride and such in all human beings, Right? I don't know how specifically this works with respect to the Catholic Church and blah, blah, blah. But the idea is the idea is that evil inheres, instead of trying to divorce myself from that ability, that primordial, as we'll see in a second, drive, I embrace it. I am that guy. I don't like to be that guy. Have I been that guy in my life? I absolutely have. Right? Will I be that guy in the future? I probably will. Right? Conditions need to be in such that egoistically, rationally, legally, more than anything, legally, um, I'm justified in doing the act. But morality, I don't really care about that, right? Is it legal? Yeah, it's legal. Well, if it's legal, mm, you might think it's immoral and thus not participate in this act. I don't care that it's not moral. Um, if it's not illegal, then then it's it's all bets are off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to participate in whatever the activity is because it's not illegal. The only law for the egoist that governs conduct is the law. Right? You, you can't be outside of the law. There's a, a certain sense of egoism that it's, it's, you've stepped outside of the realm of conduct and then the authorities will, they'll exterminate you. They'll, they'll keep you in check. And I'm about to give you a reference um, in a second from, from Apocalypse Now, which is, which is just the, the greatest Nietzschean movie ever made. Right? It's uh, probably my number two or three movie, Matrix number one, I would say, followed closely probably by now Apocalypse Now. But Apocalypse Now is definitely top three for me, right? Um, so the idea is you, you don't believe in this opposition, right? You, you, the egoist doesn't. The person motivated by a will to good believes in the opposition. You're either all good or all evil, and everything that is evil are those things which give me the ability to be a threat to someone else. So I need to divorce myself from all of those things which give me the ability to be a threat to someone else, a threat to myself, um, and then I live this sort of, I live this placid, in a sense, existence. That's, that's, that's the idea. B, 
the good man must defeat the evil man. I mean, duh, right? Good fights bad, right? The, co the Crusades, conquest, uh, proselytization, um, proselytization that results in, in uh, colonialism and conquest, right? I mean, is obviously the case. No, Chinoa Achebe says, where the white man brings his religion, he quickly brings his political system, right? It's to no surprise that after you've proselytized and converted, what comes next is an institution of governance and control. This is, this is as old as, as old as, as old as old as old. Right? It's as old as human existence. So, the good man must defeat the evil man. That's pretty simple. See, the good man is justified. That's what I love, right? The good man is justified in his attempt to destroy the evil man because in so doing, the good man returns, this is me, not Nietzsche, the good man returns the universe to its rightful order. Nietzsche, of course, refutes this, right? There is a sense in which, insofar as the good man is fighting the evil man, the only conflict, then, the only threat that I can, I'm justified in presenting. Think about this. For everything else, this is what the system says, right? The system says that you cannot become a threat to basically anything that is. You have to live this existence of, personal existence, really, of humility and self-restraint and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. And here are the rules that say how you are to live. But when it comes to evil, oh, you are absolutely justified in totally obliterating evil, right? You're totally justified under this account to destroy evil. So you have to think about it then. The argument outside of a will to good from um, a more egoistic interpretation is that these individuals actually don't recognize that they are in fact egoist, that they do in fact have these primal drives for, for you know, killing other people, you know, doing really, really bad stuff in the world. I, I don't mean this figuratively. I mean really doing bad stuff in the world, right? Um, if you're physical, if you're driven by sort of physical domination, other people are driven by other types of domination. They look to do potentially, or they, you know, you personally gauge how deep you want to get in controlling the lives of other people or controlling the bodies of other people and so on. Quick side note, it has nothing to do with anything. It actually does, but I watched the, um, prior to his execution, Jeffrey Dahmer gave an interview with uh, MSN or something, and his dad was there on in the interview, and uh, he the interviewer I forget who it was asked Dahmer, um, you know wh what's driving you like what was that all about? And I think I remember Dahmer saying something that I th just totally sh shattered the way I looked at the world. He was like you know I just wanted to have control over their bodies, like I don't want you to leave. I know it's getting late, and I know you'd like to leave, but I really want you to stay right there. We can't exercise that level of control over people because people are free, autonomous human beings, and they leave and they come when they like. Dahmer doesn't want you to leave. He wants you to stay. No, I want to have sex one more time. Uh, I don't want to have any more sex. No, I, I want to have sex one more time. So then you can see how, depending on how immersed you are in control, physically, the highest level of control the total egoistic abuse, and Nietzsche would say that this is an immoral act, um, with a question mark around it, with scare quotes, but it is immoral, and more importantly for me, it's illegal, is the fact that it was that desire to control another physical body that led Dahmer to, to do what he did, and we know what he did, right? He had sex when he wanted, he ate when he wanted, he kept the people where he wanted for as long as he wanted. He was in total control. That's what it was, right? The idea is the only attempt, the only time that the good man has the ability to actually exercise and, 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 and indulge in this control, maybe not to that level, that is a freaking extreme, is when he's fighting evil. So what do you think he does? He finds evil in everything. Everything's evil, everything's evil, everything's evil, everything's evil. And that primal desire just gets bigger and bigger. And that sense of destruction and that bloodlust just gets hungrier and hungrier. And more vengeful and more hateful. Why? Because I am justified to do this one thing. This is the only thing the system allows me to do. Everything else, I stay in line. But the system does allow me 
to seek havoc and vengeance.